Hello and thank you for buying Henson's Flying Machines P51 Mustang. This kit includes five sheets of laser cut balsa wood, a 3D printed nose cone or propeller spinner, a rubber motor kit and propeller and a vacuum formed canopy. To build the kit you will need the instructions included, the parts numbering list included, a scalpel or sharp hobby knife, superglue or balsa cement, and the tissue paper included. Before assembling the kit, you can mark all of the parts on each sheet using the corresponding numbers on the parts list sheet. Remove the pieces gently from the balsa sheet by cutting the tabs, holding them in place. To begin building the model, you will need parts 1A and 1B, the two sides of the fuselage, parts 2A, the main cross member of the fuselage, and part 3A, the supporting member. From the waste wood, keep a 90 degree edged angle just to help you position the pieces. Begin by slotting part 2A into the second forward slat here, like so, from the bottom upwards, and then allowing it to fit into the tab at the top. Using your 90 degree angle, carefully position it so that it is resting at exactly 90 degrees with the wing support tab. Using the 90 degree angle, just make sure that the part 2A is fitting at 90 degrees and glue the main fuselage body, part 1A. Also make sure that the section is glued strongly into the tab that in place. Move on to part 3A which fits with the wing support into the bottom of the fuselage like so. Push it down firmly again using your 90 degree offcut. Position it firmly and parallel to part 2A gluing it solidly in place and at 90 degrees main fuselage body. You can now take 1B, the opposing side of the fuselage, and dry fit it over the two lower wing supports and into the tab at the top, like so. Use your 90 degree angle to confirm that everything is sitting flush, like so. Once you're happy, glue to the opposing side of the fuselage. Allow to dry before moving on. The next part to fit is part 4A, which is the rear fuselage former. This fits into the two slots here, further back in the fuselage. Slide it in from the top, supporting the balsa wood and allowing the two tabs to slot into the tab holes on the side. Confirm that this is vertical and in place, and then just use your little 90 degree to check that you've got it where it should be. Check that the tabs are all the way down into the slots before gluing. You've got a firm joint. And then glue along the inside where 4A meets the fuselage. The next section to complete is part 5A, which is the nose former. The nose former sits over the two cutout sections on the front of the fuselage, like so. As you can see, the outcuts will fit in here fairly strongly. Just make sure that it's aligned the correct way. And again, using the 90 degree, make sure that your fuselage sides are parallel. And then glue along the inside edge here, 
on both sides and once it's dried also along this front edge here just to make sure that the tabs are thoroughly seated in place and glued. The next stage is part 5A which is one of the rear fuselage formers which is going to start dictating the shape of the fuselage bending back towards the tail. Now this will need some slight trimming or sanding just on the tabs here very gently peeling away some of the wood or using a nail file just to file the tabs slightly smaller and then dry fit this in place into the tabs on the top of the tail like so. Now, you want to compare the angle of the rear fuselage by just gently pinching together the very tail section and comparing the curvature of the fuselage like so. Once you're happy glue the tabs and along the inside to the fuselage and hold in place while it dries. The next parts you need are part 7A the rear of the cockpit and part 8A the instrument panel that fits like so. Now begin with fitting the rear of the cockpit where these outstretched tabs fit into these slight divots here at the back end of the cockpit. Laying on top like so with the furthest end resting on top of the fuselage former. Now to fit slightly pinch the fuselage together before gluing. So holding the top of the fuselage around the cockpit area pinch ever so slightly and then glue each of the tabs into the formers and also on the edges of the top of the fuselage formers the rear. Hold that until set before moving on to part 8A the dashboard or instrument panel. The instrument panel will sit like so again just slightly pinch the instrument panel will sit at an angle. Make sure that you're following the angle of the cut in the wood and the tabs. Like so. There are. The next piece to fit is pot 9A, which is the cockpit floor. This slides in from the bottom of the fuselage, but up against part 4A and needs a little bit of positioning. It will be in line with the bottom of this fuselage cut out here, flat up against part 4A, about a millimeter below the rectangular cutout, and then diagonally downwards and finishing above this cutout here. Just check that you've got the positioning right, pinch the fuselage side slightly to hold it in place until you've checked all the way around that it's fitting correctly. Make sure that it's flat and especially make sure that it does not protrude past this slot in the bottom of the fuselage here where the wings will fasten in. Several dry fits may be necessary. But it's okay to take your time with this part. Once you're happy with it, glue along the edges. And the part 4A the rear former. Let that dry thoroughly before moving on. The next part of the process is part 10A, which is the format for the lower wings. Now this slides into the two slotted out tabs on the bottom of the fuselage. Make sure that the wing connection tabs are to the forward and slide the point in all the way to the back and then make sure that the protrusions are the same on each side. There should be about half a millimeter variance 
and the wing support tabs should be in line with the wing support former. Once it is perfectly square and flush, and you've checked it on both sides in relation to the fuselage, hold it in place and glue it securely as possible to the fuselage and to the fuselage cross formers. This is a main wing support, so don't worry about making it too strong. And where possible, the wing support formers underneath here as well. Allow that to dry thoroughly before moving on. The next parts you'll need to begin assembly are the tail section part 11A, the tail brace part 12A, and the horizontal tail piece 12A. Now these fit together in a jigsaw pattern like so. Holding 11A, part 13A slots into the top most slot quite snugly, like so, all the way in. Like so. Now, using your 90 degree, just check that you have it sitting perfectly right. Hold it from one side. Support it in place. Check. All of the angles are correct. And then glue where the two parts intersect. And also glue this on top as well, just for extra strength. The next part to fit in is part 12A, which is the lower fuselage former. This slides into the lower of the two slots on 11A, like so. Slide it all the way back for a firm fit. Now this is going to control where the end of your tail braces together and glues correctly. Now, once you're happy with that, glue it in place. Let the whole section dry. Fitting the tail assembly into the fuselage, go from the top and bring in the triangle from the back. It will slightly arch the sides of the fuselage apart until they click in below part 13A. As you can see here. Now part 12A will form the curvature of the fuselage with the ends of the two fuselage coming back and touching to 11A the tail plane. Make sure that the tail horizontal sits flush down into the fuselage and just arrange it until you're happy with the way it's sitting like so moving slightly further back until Everything is smoothly together, like so. Also check the alignment of the tail plane against the fuselage. You can do this using the holes at the top. It will show you any alignment problems you're having, like so. With everything in place, just glue along these edges here. Just attack the section in place, allow that to dry, a small drop of glue on the leading edge where it connects here, then turning it over, holding it in place, glue down inside of the fuselage section to part 12A, and just pinch the very tail of the fuselage together, hold it in place correctly there, and then and add a drop of glue just where the two ends of the fuselage connect to 11A, the tail plane. The next parts are ports 14A and B and parts 15A and B. Part 16A is an alternative to part 15B depending on motor mounting. 
beginning with part 14A, slide this in just forward of the instrument panel into the two slots here, like so. Carefully all the way down, making sure that you've got a snug fit. Pressing the fuselage slightly together towards the center point. Just check the alignment from the nose and then glue specifically into the tabs there to hold it in place on both sides. And then also just where it connects to the instrument panel. Part 14B is a forward nose former which slots into the two tabs slightly more forward. Press the fuselage slightly together and just glue into the tabs on each side. You can again check the alignment from the nose backwards. Moving on to parts 15A and B, these are the lower formers of the nose. These fit into the two tabs below, like so. Dry fit them into place. If you do need to trim or sand them, do so at this point, but they should fit snugly. Parts are the same, so they are interchangeable, like so. And if you did want to fit a stronger motor, part 16A is interchangeable with part 15A. Or you can use this as a reinforcement brace and just glue it slightly behind the front former there after trimming the tabs off. So with parts 15A and B in place, slightly pinch the fuselage and then glue in place over the tabs. Hold until dry. The next stage in building the model is to start building up the nose cone. You'll use this using parts 17 A and B, 18 A and B, 19 A and B, 20 A, 21 A and 22 A. These go together in this order as you can see laid out here. Beginning with part 17 A which is in two parts A and B. These go together like so. And then gently gluing the center of these two mirrored parts. Make sure that they sit flat and then glue to the back of them. The next part to make up is 18 A and B, which is divided from top to bottom and includes the scoop underneath the nose. As you can see these two parts butt up like so top to bottom and align them using the center rectangle and glue the seam on both sides like so. Repeat the same process with part 19 checking that the bulge is in the same place on both parts and then gluing top and bottom. Allow those to dry fully before moving on. With the different sections glued together, start by putting part 18A over the top of 17A. Now align this very carefully using the inner rectangle as a guide. Laying it flat Line up the rectangle until you are perfectly happy. As you can see, there will be a little overlap on each side there. This is builds up the contours and just tack this into place around the outside edge. Bringing in the next part, lighting A and B, make sure that the bulge is towards the lower end and then align the rectangle once again on the top making sure that the top is flush and that the spacing all around is as you want it. 
and then tack on each side. As you can see, you're building up the contours with the air intake at the bottom. Next part being 20A, which is going to sit just like so on top of the built up nose section. Now, when you're aligning this, use a rectangle cutout to judge, but not align perfectly to the below. Once you're happy with it, tack it in place. Like so. Part 21A fits over the same part with the smaller rectangle aligning with the top of the cutout rectangle in the preceding part. Tack that in place on the outer edge. Like so. Then the smaller circle, 22A, fits with the rectangle lining up and the small propeller circle in the middle. If necessary, you can place a small piece of balsa or a toothpick down the center just to align until you are perfectly happy. And then again, tack glue. on the outside. With the completed nose in part, you can now dry fit it to the fuselage to the top of the front former, making sure along this front edge everything is aligned as you would want it, with the center running downwards and the top fitting in like so. Once you're happy with it, just tack glue around the edges here, like so, and turning it over, glue around the inside formers and also around the inside of the rectangle to form a strong bond. With the nose in place on the fuselage and firmly mounted, it's time to lay it aside and begin on the wing sections. Part 26A and 27B form the two sides of the wing. The aileron is attachable and can be fitted in here as you can see. 26 and 27 fit together like so, with these jigsaw pieces placing into each other simply. Sure that they are aligned here and simply glue along the jigsaw edge running up smoothly and making sure that the wing itself is flat. Careful not to glue the wing to your cutting surface. The ailerons are detachable. If you are going to make this into a control surface that can be moved, remove them at this point. If you are happy with them where they are, you'll glue them in when you put in the wing spar. To begin placing the wing spars in, you will need wing profile type A and wing profile type C. These form the outer edges. Now when you're placing these into the wing, you need to make sure that they are lined with the cutout edge as far forward as possible. Do that on each wing profile in order to keep the center spar cut out in the same place. Just dry fit your first wing profile, wing profile A, into the inside of the wing like so and butt it up as close as possible to this inside straight edge. Do it first on the front, then on the rear, and just a little bit along the trailing edge there. Next, wing profile type C goes on the extreme outer end of the wing, and in the same way, butts up the outside edge of the rectangle, pushes forward, aligning to the front, it again on the front, the back, and along the edge. The last part to put in is another wing profile type A, which will fit into this 
drop down cut out here in the middle of the wing. Use the rear of the rectangle there and your 90 degree edge in order to align it as straight as possible. Get that fitment nice, align it forward and then glue it just on the front and on the back. Allow that to dry before moving on to the next step. The next part of building a wing is wing profile type B. This has two holes in it and is missing the third hole of type A. These fit into the smaller rectangles here like so. Now the placement of these is entirely optional and you want to space them out evenly into the rectangle as much as possible. You can of course build the model even lighter by removing one of them and just having two evenly spaced profiles. Now using your little 90 degree offcut, just judge where it should sit. Again. Align it as far forward as possible, close to the front and rear. Moving along, repeat the process with each of the wing profiles, making sure that they are exactly where you want to place them. You can always mark these with a pencil. Now if you are going to make mo the ailerons movable, remember not to glue the profiles directly to the aileron. That gives a a display of kind of spacing for the wing profiles, like so. Now you want to return to wing profiles type A, which fit like so. Two of them spaced evenly in the gap left. In a small rectangle. Now again, Use your 90 degree, make sure that it is fitted correctly, and butt it up forward. Like so. With all of the wing profiles fitted, you'll be able to see the shape of the wing and where the main wing spar is going to fit. Now, if you are going to make these ailerons movable, at this point you want to trim all of these profiles just to the beginning of the aileron section there, and you can hinge the aileron by threading between the small cutouts. In this case, I'm going to glue the aileron in place by gluing it directly to the wing profiles or spars and then just ever so slightly in the corners. And the same on the smaller aileron. Just to give me a more solid wing. There you go, that is the completed wing minus the wing spar and as you can see all of the slots for the wing spar are aligned so when we fit that to the fuselage that will just lay straight in. Now when building 
the opposing wing. Make sure that you align all of your parts against your built wing, just to check that you are building an absolute mirror image. Otherwise, with two lead parts, it's very easy to end up building two left wings. So line everything like that. Once you're happy with it, then start gluing it together using exactly the same process. In reverse. Again, checking alignment before gluing at every point. Then type A wing profile going into the beginning. Again, align forward. Gluing in and then strengthening by gluing it to the main part of the wing. Type C, going at the extremity of the wing, inside here. Align forward. Glued into place. Continue the process exactly as you would on the opposing wing until you have completed both wings as a perfect mirror image of each other. With the wings currently drying, lay them to a side for now. Looking back on the fuselage, if you were to fit your rubber motor, now would be the time. Fitting the cotter pin over your rubber band from the inside with your bearing and out the front over your propeller as per the diagram. Fitting the matchstick behind this bulkhead here to the rear of the cockpit with the rubber band already in place over the top and thread it down through the center. Like so. With its anchor point back here. Now, if you are fitting an electric motor, make sure that you have created space in here to fit it forward here into the nose. Again, if you are converting to micro RC, there's plenty of space inside for small linear motors and for your 
battery pack and such, which will need to sit here, just forward of the central wing spar, which you'll see when you go together. If you are converting to micro RC or electric power, it's advisable to skip out all of the stringers which are running along the fuselage until you've fitted and tested all of your electrics and decided where you're putting your battery and receiver. For now, we're going to finish the fuselage as it is, building up the stringers, the lower scoop, and finishing off the contours before fitting the wings. To uh, cut out these stringers, identify the parts on a sheet. There's strings type A, C, and the wing spars. So you can cut out types A and C together. Same length, cut the ends, and then simply separate them. There are spares created using the parts in between. Now, beginning at the back of the aircraft, identify the top of the rear fuselage former and try and fit your first stringer into the little gap there, like so. That then sits further along the back of the fuselage into this part here. So just try and fit that. And as you can see, there's a very small notch in the top of the tailplane here. Identify where that sits and then just trim the stringer to fit into that notch. So let's fit that now forward into there. And just very carefully trimming it in place. So, now we'll start gluing the rear of the cockpit here, over the top of this notch, and to where it meets the tail unit. Let that dry thoroughly. Now, with the side of the tail, the stringers fit into the two notches on either side. Slide them forward until they come into contact with this rear of the cockpit here, part 7A, and sit on top of the fuselage formers. Glue it first here, to this cross section, and to the back of part 7A, then backwards, over this here. With that in place, just gently curve your string it inwards and downwards to connect with the tail plane, like so and just glue it in place very carefully. If you can see there, it's got a very slight curvature to it, bringing it into the tail. Repeat the process on the other side, leg it in, bring it forward in place, making sure that you've got a good contact. If necessary, trim, just until you are sure contact place and of course glue and glue further backwards on one side of the set curve in towards the tail glue in place and hold until dry onto the nose of the aircraft start with the very top here where the instrument cluster meets the nose and slot one of the stringers in, moving forward, slot it into the top of all of these parts. 
until you reach the actual nose itself. Now here you are going to need to trim it. Trim it in line with the front of that hole where it comes into contact with the nacelle. Now just moving the blade back and forward very carefully slice through until you have it and it should just press down very gently into that gap like so and fit quite snugly. And moving backwards and press it down with the flat of the blade just to get the right pressure on it. Don't forget once all of these are in place you can always sand them back with a little nail file or a little bit of sandpaper. Once you're happy with that fitment just glue along where it passes through all of these support parts. Moving on to the side, move that spar so it butts up the instrument panel and then just lay it into the side creases of the nacelle. Glue in place and then very gently again trim forward of the hole so that it rests into the hole like so and then press it down into place. Thank you. Repeat the process on the other side. and then hold until dry. The next part fit is the stringer that goes in underneath the fuselage. It fits here underneath part 23A and then into the bottom of the fuselage supports. Just make sure that you have that slightly forward of the tail wheel so that it touches and into the tabs Glue it into those tabs and to where it just touches the tail wheel. The next part is to build up the scoop here. Use the full length of the stringer. Now you want to just hold that down into the tab on 24A. Allow it to sit into the tab on 23A and then just push it down Bend it very carefully backwards until it just touches the rear stringer. Glue it first to the rear stringer, then the front here, and then finally in the middle. This is the weakest point of the model, but it gives that contoured shape. Just reinforce the bonds as you go. Now, of course, if you want to make it simpler, you can do away with 23 and 24A and just cover this straight and leave the bottom stringer here holding the shape and getting rid of this upper stringer there, like so. That gives us our very distinctive Mustang shape. Now, laying the fuselage to side for a moment, we'll prepare the wings for fitting. The fuselage finished, it's time to start fitting the completed wings. The cutouts in the wings fit directly onto the tabs underneath the fuselage like so, and the wing joint butts up straight against here. You can see here where the wing profiles coming out of the fuselage connect, and we're just going to glue straight along that edge like so after checking the alignment and glue the main body of the wing to the wing support extended from the side of the fuselage. Now make sure that this is an excellent right the whole way along. Feel free to put plenty of glue on it. 
once you're happy with it, the wing spar, as per the instructions, will slide straight through the top of each of the wing profiles and then push forward until it comes into contact with the fuselage. Make sure that the wing spar is pushed down firmly into all of the wing profiles and sitting flush with the top. Then beginning on the outer edge, glue everywhere the wing spar passes through the wing profiles. And where the wing spar meets the side of the fuselage. Like so. Allow the first wing to dry before moving on to the second wing. Fit the second wing exactly the same way, sliding it in place with the tab guiding you, making sure that it's flush to the fuselage, gluing on the edge and allowing the protrusions from the fuselage to guide the angle of the wing. making sure that you have a tight bond, laying your wing spar into place, butting it up with the fuselage, and touching it into the top of every one of the wing profiles, and gluing it solidly into place. Wait for that to dry before continuing. The next piece of detail to add is the exhaust packs, parts 25A and 25B. Now these fit onto the side of the fuselage like so. If you are covering the aircraft, leave these off until you are finished covering the aircraft. They can be fitted like so, or more forward, depending entirely on the builder's choice. I'm going to fit them slightly more forward and I'm just going to glue them simply to the fuselage. The cutout in the exhaust fits over this side of the fuselage here and it butts up to the top like so and glues to the top and to the stringer. Repeat the same process on the opposing side. At this stage be careful not to put pressure on the bottom of the fuselage on to crack any of the stringers along the top of the finger. Having finished the exhaust stack, the next step is to build the undercarriage which are parts 30A and 31B. As you can see, these slot directly into each other, like so, and form a T-shape at the top. The T-shape fits into this T-shape cut out in the bottom of the wing. Now, just test the fitment here, and then Align it as best fit and glue directly all the way along the seam. Now, if you are going to be flying this model, it's a better idea not to include the landing gear as they sometimes snap off in a rough landing. Alternatively, you could use a piece of piano wire and run along the inside. The foam wheels here are attached by trimming back this small balsa leg and then pressing the wheel and gluing it into place. Now, if we very carefully 
trim this T-shape. You can also use a bit of sanding paper to do this. We'll see that it fits. Like so. Into the bottom of the wing and can be glued at the correct angle. Now, if you want to use a 90 degree to make sure that it is 90 degrees to the wing rather than the fuselage, that will give it a good outwards edge. Now, I'm not going to glue this in place now because I want to cover first. I am, however, going to fit the tail sections. Now, the tail sections are your parts 29A and B. These fit like so into the tabs here and can be adjusted and glued in place or of course you could hinge them with a small paper hinge if you're going for micro RC. As I'm going to be using this for free flight, I'm going to simply glue them into place, making sure that these tabs are fitted correctly and then just glue all the way along the seam. I'm putting a slight upwards angle into it as I want some lift. And then I'm mirroring that on the other side. Just a very tiny amount of lift going in. But make sure if you do put any adjustment in, it has to be the same on both sides or you will get a spin. There we go. Now the rudder upright section is fitted like so, part 28A simply fits into the tab here and can be angled as you like and again paper hinge or glue directly into place. You can also use a threaded hinge or a very small plastic hinge and then fit that very simply into place. The only remaining steps are to fit the thermoform canopy by trimming it around, gluing it in place and then covering over the top and fitting the pre-built landing gear and foam wheels. Thank you very much for building Henson's flying machines. Good luck.